Imagine you had a task to find out whether you could find life anywhere in the universe outside planet Earth. How would you go about that? By what token would you determine whether somewhere outside planet Earth there was life? Well, a number of people have been looking into this problem and usually they go looking for things that you would associate with terrestrial life. For example, people go looking for water. In fact, that is a crude way of looking for life. It might allow you to find possible locations for life that is similar to what is happening here on Earth. But life in general? Not sure. A better way of describing life would be by recognizing the fact that life results in a local decrease of entropy. By, uh, according to the second law of thermodynamics, entropy will always increase in a closed system. And the universe as a whole is a closed system. So the en entropy of the universe as a whole will always increase. But what life does is that it takes a local conditions not closed uh, so distinct from but not separate from the rest of the universe and manages to locally decrease entropy usually this is done by a large throughput of energy for example on planet earth by virtue of the fact that the sun continuously radiates the earth with energy and life processes that energy and radiates it out back out into space. So for space as a whole, including the Earth, the entropy will increase. But locally on Earth, for living organisms, they manage to decrease their own internal entropy whilst they're alive. Now, what has this got to do with the subject of this series, free will? Well, this is where it becomes interesting because when you investigate the laws of thermodynamics and you look at, for example, Boltzmann's equations, you find a peculiar form of his formulas. I'm go not going to display them here, you can look them up if you want. But after a while you start realizing that these equations look very familiar and that is not coincidental because formally they are identical to Claude Shannon's equations for the processing of information and therefore another way of describing what life is is rather than describe, describing it thermodynamically as a local decrease in um, entropy you can say that life is a mechanism by which information is constantly processed throughout the universe. And that is where it becomes very interesting. Look at a human being. And this is something that a lot of people have done. They've looked at a human being and said to themselves, where does thinking take place? Where does the sense of me, of, of I, of self reside? What do you think the answer to that question is? Chances are you're going to say that thinking takes plain place inside the brain. And the thing is, you'd be wrong. Before you dismiss me as a nutcase, just hear me out. Because thinking does not take place in the brain. It takes place in the mind. The mind uses the brain. So the brain is the mechanism by which the mind can exist 
and the uh, infrastructure that the mind uses to think but the mind is not the brain and again before you dismiss me as a nutcase remember what I said at the beginning of my first part of this series I said I am not going to assume anything supernatural and I am not the mind is not a supernatural thing and the easiest way to understand it is by realizing what you're looking at right now no no you're not looking at me you're looking at the screen of your computer the computer is like the brain and the mind is the software that makes the computer do what it does the software is a set of instructions and this is where you have to realize something which is very very important so the mind or in the case of a computer software what is that it is a pattern of information it is instructions it is internal states patterns of neural connections within the brain for example but all of these are superimposed on the physical substrate and they drive the physical substrate they instruct the physical substrate on what it needs to do and that is where there comes a disconnect a separation of or an abstraction from the physical laws of this physical of the actual substrate and again a good way of understanding what is going on here is by looking at computers you are looking at a video of me sitting here talking to you that video is nothing more than a set of instructions that YouTube sends to your PC Mac what are you looking at what are you using to look at this video the two different machines have very different infrastructures physical infrastructures and still they both respond to the instructions sent by YouTube to display these pixels in this configuration produce these sound waves and which allows you to see me talk to you look at two CDs two Microsoft CDs containing Microsoft Office and what is on these Microsoft soft CDs if you were to zoom in at an extreme level and look at the individual atoms on the CDs they would be completely different you would not be able to see any similarity between one CD and the other however as far as we are concerned they are identical copies of the software the set of instructions that drives your PC to use Microsoft Office and that is what is important it's the instructions are abstract instructions and they do not care about the nature of the physical substrate that is executing those instructions so that is one level of separation from the physical world with its deterministic physical laws that tell individual particles what they're doing and what a complex entity like a mind can make a lump of matter like this body do this body is what is known as a universal Turing machine it can take any set of instructions and do anything that is computable and that is the next step on understanding what free will might be and I want you to think about that and see you for the next episode whenever I get around to doing that